I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, May the 18th, 2015. Yom Yerushalayim, Jerusalem Day was marked yesterday in Israel, commemorating the reunification of Jerusalem after the Six-Day War of 1967. A march through Jerusalem's old city was marred by some clashes reported between some right-wing Jewish Israeli marchers and Palestinians. At least two Israeli police officers were said to have been injured and at least two Palestinians were arrested. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed the Rav Kook Center Yeshiva for Jerusalem Day yesterday, where he vowed to continue building in the city and that it would never be divided again. Netanyahu also spoke at the official state ceremony at Ammunition Hill in Jerusalem last night, as did Israeli President Reuven Rivlin, who addressed the range of residents of the city, secular, religious, Arab, and Jew. He said, in my united Jerusalem, there are no second-class sons, there are no second-class Jerusalemites. We completed the physical unification of the city, but the task of unifying the city's social and economic lives has barely begun. Likud Knesset member Silvan Shalom confirmed today that he has been appointed by Prime Minister Netanyahu to lead negotiations with the Palestinians as well as, quote, strategic dialogue with the United States regarding Iran. Shalom, who was just appointed interior minister of Netanyahu's new government, said the appointment by the prime minister indicates that Netanyahu does want to reach a peace deal. In contrast, he said, to the, quote, accusations that Israel refuses peace, and in contrast to the Palestinian claims that they cannot avoid unilateral actions in order to advance the establishment of a Palestinian state. Meanwhile, the Jerusalem Post reports that Palestinian Authority Foreign Minister Riyad Malki said today that the PA has submitted an official request to the International Criminal Court in The Hague to set a date for filing lawsuits against Israel, which include claims that the IDF committed war crimes during the war with Hamas in Gaza this past summer and with regards to Israel's building in the West Bank. Maliki said the PA was now awaiting the court's response. The PA's bid to join the ICC earlier this year to charge Israel with war crimes is one such unilateral action which Israel strongly opposes. Jewish groups here in the U.S. expressed their outrage this weekend over Greek officials' demands to remove the Star of David from a Holocaust memorial. According to the Central Board of Jewish Communities in Greece, the mayor and city council of Kavala had called for the symbol to be removed from the monument, which pays tribute to the 1,484 Jews of Kavala who were murdered during the Holocaust. It was said to be unveiled yesterday as part of the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II. B'nai B'rith International called the demand by the officials in Kavala deplorable. National Director of the Anti-Defamation League, Abe Foxman, said Kavala's Jews were killed because they were Jews, and the value of a monument is to make that fact demonstrably clear. Executive Director of the American Jewish Committee, David Harris, asked how it was possible that the very symbol the Nazis required Jews to wear in the death camps was, quote, deemed unfit for public display in Kavala. Greek Secretary General of the Ministry of Culture, Education and Religious Affairs, Yorgos Kalantzis, expressed his condemnation as well. And after the backlash and protests yesterday in Kavala, the Associated Press reports that the city's mayor, Dimitris Sanakaset, has now relented and said the ceremony would take place very soon. A rabbi who devised a system of voyeurism whereby he could watch women as they entered the mikveh in a state of total undress has been found guilty and was sentenced. Barry Freundel was sentenced to six and a half years in prison for videotaping dozens of nude women at a ritual bath in Washington, D.C. The conviction and sentence ends a story that has embarrassed the Orthodox community since Freundel's arrest in October of last year. At the time of his arrest, Barry Freundel was serving as both a rabbi in a Washington, D.C. congregation and as the vice president of the Vaad of Greater Washington, the rabbinical council in our nation's capital. The Canadian Friends of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem announced last week that a museum dedicated to the continuing legacy of Albert Einstein will be established in Jerusalem at the university, 
Einstein is considered a co-founder of Hebrew U. He served on its first board of governors, a board that also included Sigmund Freud, Martin Buber, and Chaim Weizmann. The announcement of the new museum was made in celebration of the centennial of Einstein's theory of relativity. The Einstein Museum will be the first institution dedicated to the Jewish theoretical physicist. There is a permanent Albert Einstein exhibit in the U.S. located within Princeton. And turning now to our programming for tonight, at 7.30, Director of International Interreligious Affairs for the American Jewish Committee, Rabbi David Rosen, discusses how the positive development of Jewish-Catholic relations offers hope for reconciliation with the Muslim world. That's an AJC of Westchester program from Temple Israel, New Rochelle. Then at 8 tonight, Professor of History at UC Berkeley, John Connolly, discusses the way Monsignor John Osterreicher influenced the Catholic view of Judaism. That's from Fairfield University. At 9 tonight, Mark Golub sits down with feminist psychologist and author Phyllis Chesler on the Chaim. And at 10 o'clock, actor Mandy Patinkin talks about his prolific career with novelist Thane Rosenbaum in a JBS television exclusive from the 92nd Street Y in New York City. And right after this newscast tonight, a new segment of In the News. And that's the JBS News Update from Monday, May the 18th, 2015. I'm Tisha Bader.